Right, eh? so uh, for today we're going to continue with um, kalau tengok nama subjek kita is uh, zakat and tax planning kan, tapi I shift uh, the zakat part towards the end of the semester, so here we are. We actually have uh, two parts for this uh, zakat planning, eh? but I, I think uh, since we have time and we start a bit late today, eh? I try to uh, combine eh, both parts, uh, part one and also part two, so that next week uh, we can uh, proceed with uh, our last topic, which is tax administration and tax planning. Eh? Minggu depan pun dah minggu 13, eh? so this week is already week 12. So uh, I don't plan to have class uh, on week 14. Eh? Anyway, all right, so for uh, this week's uh, topic eh, for zakat and uh, planning and application of zakat on wealth, so we're, we're go going to look at um, uh, the zakat application eh, on the different types of uh, wealth. Okay, so first of all, let's look at, uh, this is our, basically our table of content and eh, what we're going to, to have um, for this uh, topic. Uh, first uh, one is uh, the introduction point, importance of zakat, the conditions of paying zakat, the beneficiaries and the zakat system in Malaysia, uh, the main types of zakat and also zakat fitrah. And we have another part, eh? uh, I separated the notes into two parts. Eh? The second part is uh, zakat on wealth. So specifically, we're dealing with a specific uh, zakat on wealth, eh? particularly uh, zakat on agriculture, on gold, shares, money, investment, takaful, and also uh, zakat on business. Okay. All right, as you can see from, from the slide, um, what we have here is that uh, when we talk about uh, zakat, eh, so for non-Muslim, zakat is is a, a concept eh, similar to taxation, and we call it Islamic. Uh, we can call it Islamic taxation, lah, eh? The concept is similar to tax. That is why we can combine eh, zakat and also uh, tax. So um, zakat is one of the five pillars of Islam, eh, So which is required of Muslim. Um, if the wealth is uh, equivalent or exceeds certain threshold known as nisab. So we are going to uh, look at a few uh, Arabic words here. Eh? Kita tengok the first one is we can say that we have nisab here which is a, a threshold, eh? a limit. And so these are the verses in the Quran eh? talking about uh, zakat and zakat payment. So you can read, read this part. All right. Uh, so the importance of zakat, so why we have to learn about uh, this uh, zakat. Eh? So like I said, uh, for Muslim, this is uh, one of the five uh, pillars uh, which are the basic act considered mandatory. And uh, so we have um, solat, paying zakat, eh, haji, um, testimony, number one, and also fasting during uh, during Ramadan. Okay, so for this zakat, uh, in uh, Arabic, Arabic word, it, the you can say that the direct translation, it can be purifies and cleanses wealth. So the wealth that we have must be purified and cleanses through uh, zakat. Eh? So it is very important for Muslims to fulfill uh, their zakat obligation. So like I said, there are a few verses in the Quran. Eh? So for example, uh, we have here, um, to him belongs all that is in heaven and all that is on earth and all that is between them and all that is under the soil. So we also have a verse from... Uh, Al-Baqarah, oh, you believe, spend off the good things which we have legally earned and of what that which we have produced from the earth for you. And it is an annual obligation. Okay, so uh, this way the poverty among the Muslim could be minimized through uh, zakat because we all know every state and eh, they have the zakat authority who actually collected and also distributed uh, the zakat money. Eh? So by paying zakat, it will purify the wealth and soul of the zakat payer and... So again, eh, there are a few verses in the Quran talking about uh, zakat, ni, right? And then the meaning of zakat, the literal meaning can be uh, explained as cleansing or purifying something from dirt or filth. Eh? It also means praise, growth and also increase. Legally, it is a transfer of ownership of specific wealth to specific recipients under specific conditions. So the keyword here for zakat, eh, it is actually specific wealth. Not all wealth are zakatable. Eh? Uh, to specific recipient and under specific condition, all right? So, you might wonder what is the difference then between zakat and charity, kan? Nampak macam zakat ni pun macam buat charity juga, eh? So, uh, first of all, is the status. So, zakat is obligatory for Muslim. Charity is recommended, eh? So, we can always do charity. 
the rate for zakat is specific. The charity is not, it is up to you how much you want to give it. Eh? But for zakat, it is specific, which is 2.5% from the wealth. Sikit je, 2.5% sahaja. Uh, the recipient of zakat is specific as well. Kita ada penerima-penerima zakat. Eh? Uh, charity not applicable. Even to animals, you can do charity even to animals. Eh? But for zakat, it is specific. The terms for zakat is defined. Charity not defined. General, very general. The type of wealth, uh, which is uh, zakatable, is also defined. Uh, the charity, no, you can give anything eh, that you like. So, but the man management system for zakat is actually based on Quran and Sunnah, and the charity depend on the giver. So, the payment sequence for zakat is after nafaqah wajibah. Uh, this is, uh, uh, we say that this is um, a limit. Eh? So, if you reach certain sufficiency limit, then you have to pay the zakat. And the charity, we can go to re close relative first. Eh? The frequency of zakat is annually. So the charity is up to you. You want to give charity, you want to make charity every day, every week. It is up to the giver. Claimable from the deceased, yes. Becoming a debt, eh? the zakat ni. Uh, charity, no. So minor and insane, not accepted. Uh, but for charity, uh, no problem. Eh? For minor, they can also uh, involve in charity. Right. So this is what I uh, mentioned before, eh? the specific and the conditions for paying zakat. So, <clears throat> there are conditions that needs to be fulfilled before it is compulsory for the individual to pay zakat. So, the conditions are, number one, is the payer must be a Muslim. So, non-Muslim are not obliged to pay zakat. But if you are a non-Muslim, you want to do good, you can go for charity. And at the end, the table that I showed you before. But not zakat. Zakat is only uh, obli uh, obliged by uh, Muslim and non-Muslim not obliged. Full ownership. You can or you have to... Uh, the conditions for paying zakat must be full ownership. Uh, harta hutang apa semua tak boleh zakat. Eh? Not own, kita kata not full ownership. Eh? So we can we say that the person has full ownership of the wealth. Eh? Absolutely right of ownership. If the person own the wealth legally during the how. Okay, another term that we use. Eh, tadi saya kata nisab kan. Must exceed certain level or certain amount. And here the ownership must uh, legally during the hall must cukup hal eh? has absolute freedom to manage and gain benefit from the wealth without any limitation and restriction okay next must be free a free person and d is full hall eh? so the wealth meets the full hall which is the wealth must be kept for a full year so how is defined as the completion period for a zakatable wealth so actual zakat hall is actually using tahun hijrah eh? tapi kita taklah kita guna january sampai december lah eh? Uh, due to practicality. So, do not ask me kenapa kita tak ikut tahun hijrah. So, due to practicality, kita gunakan uh, tahun uh, sedia ada lah. Eh. Kita guna tahun Masihi which is January until December. And then, uh, later I will show you where eh, the rules and regulation of zakat ni bukan under federal institution, uh, constitution. Bukan under uh, perlembagaan persekutuan. Bukan di bawah persekutuan. Eh. Tetapi, for zakat ni it is a, a religious matter, religious matter, semua di bawah purview state government. Eh? So, different state, they might have different calculation, different rate. Eh? So, nanti kita tengok. Okay. Um, next is, so far okay. Eh? So, this is the basic je lah. Eh? So, kalau tengok dekat sini, the zakat rate is 2.5%. So, yang bawah ni tak ada apalah, kita tak follow pun ni. Eh? So, kita still gunakan 2.5%. And the wealth must achieve the nisab. Right, so these are the condition. Eh, kita tengok. Number one must be uh, a Muslim, must have full ownership, must be a free person. The wealth must uh, meet the full hal and the wealth must achieve the nisab, the minimum rate. So kita nak tengoklah nanti eh, what are the minimum rate for this wealth. Eh. So this nisab is the threshold of wealth in order for the Muslim to be obliged to give zakat. And the amount depends on the type of zakatable wealth. So, for example, eh, nisab untuk gold. Let's say you have a lot of gold, you invest in gold. So, jumlah yang kena zakat is 85 gram. Anything more than 85 gram of gold is zakatable. If you own silver, anything more than 595 gram silver is zakatable. Nampak? Because why? Because gold is more expensive than silver. Eh? So, gold 85 gram pun dah kena zakat. Eh? So, if, you, if uh, you have cows and buffalo, more than 30 baru kena zakat. Goods and sheep, more than 40. Camel, more than 5. Eh? And 
okay, Sam might wonder eh. Okay, kat sini saya kata more than uh, 85 gram uh, for gold eh. What about liquid investment, share, uh, savings account, simpanan dekat tabung haji, ASB semua tu. Okay, apa yang kita gunakan eh, is that we use the equivalent. So, all the currencies and liquid investment, kita gunakan value of 85 gram of gold. Uh, nanti saya tunjukkan how do we compute eh. So, far okay ke? Okay, kan? Ya tak ni. <laughs> ni belum buat ni belum tengok introduction eh belum tengok calculation dia lagi. Right. Okay, doctor. Okay, so the beneficiaries remember eh tadi kita tengok a uh, must fulfill specific condition yang akan terima pun specific person saja. So these are the beneficiaries of zakat. Ini from tadi ingat eh our our um kita kata sources of law coming from Quran and Sunnah. So in the Quran it is already mentioned there are eight beneficiaries of zakat. A is hard copper, ukoro, eh? so who has neither material possession nor means of livelihood, one who suffers and has no means to sustain his or her daily needs. B is poor, masakin, eh? kita sebut miskin kan, so one with insufficient means of livelihood to meet basic needs, so ini hard core, ini poor. So how to measure eh, this A and B ni, nanti later I will show you every state they have zakat calculation. So, kita boleh key in figure dekat dalam tu. How much is your income? How much is your expenses? So, dia akan calculate dekat dalam tu. Kita kategori yang mana. If masuk kategori poor, then don't have to pay zakat but can can request for zakat money. Okay. And then C is the worker who appointed by the Muslim ruler to collect and distribute zakat. Mu'alaf, non-Muslim who embrace Islam or have the potential to embrace Islam. Uh, I record to free the captive. Eh? One to, wants to free himself from bondage or Shackles of slavery. Algorithmin, those people in debt. Okay, so they are also the beneficiaries of Zakat, Wayfarer, Ibn Sabir, who is stranded in journey. So, boleh guna duit Zakat tu untuk financial assistance and return ticket to the home state. Nak balik tak ada duit kan, kita ambil duit from uh, Zakat. And Fisabillah, in the way of Allah. This is also, uh, this is, uh, uh, includes um, students. Eh? Uh, <coughs> So, gunalah wizaz kita tu eh. So, uh, because you are the beneficiaries of zakat yang masih belajar ni. Right. So, zakat system in Malaysia. So, this is different eh from other countries. So, we do not have any international students here. So, kalau ada nak juga saya tanya eh, macam mana dia orang punya uh, zakat system tu. Right. So, again eh like I said. According to our federal constitution, semua tahu kan, perlembagaan persekutuan kan, so this is our Malaysian uh, constitution ni, undang-undang kita under schedule 9, it is stated that zakat fitrah or any other by tulmas, real, Islamic religious revenue are under the purview of state government, not federal government. So di bawah negeri masing-masing, eh? so kalau saya dekat Perak, so I will follow uh, Ma'id lah, Majlis Agama Islam Perak. Okay, so if you live and work in Selangor contohnya, akan ikut uh, Jabatan Agama Islam Selangor. So, KL pun ada. Uh, Sabah, Sarawak pun ada. Eh? So, every state they have their own um, Islamic council. Eh? So, all the religious matter memang di bawah state government, not federal government. Eh? So, you know the difference kan? Kalau federal government ni, kita ada uh, federal lah, ada Perdana Menteri, all, all the menteri ni. Eh? But for under state, and they are ruled by the Sultan of each state. Um, Alright, so the administration of, of Zakat in Malaysia is under the respective Islamic Council of each state and operation and services provided by the state is different from one state to another. Okay, so dulu eh, uh, early days Zakat collection ni emphasis dia on Zakat fitrah je. So maybe eh, you never heard of oh, Zakat untuk bowl, Zakat untuk lembu, kambing semua kan? Ha, ada. But dulu-dulu the focus only on zakat fitrah yang kita bayar pada bulan puasa tu, hari raya tu kan. Ha. Tapi uh, recent years eh, management of Islamic Council has become more proactive. So ada macam-macam eh, Islamic Council of each state ni. Uh, so they even have a various payment channel eh, because sometimes orang complain kata susahnya nak bayar zakat ni. So what they did is that they have the ATM. They ada internet transfer sekarang. Eh. Even the website very friendly. Eh. I will show you later the website. So you can just uh, key in how much wealth that you have, they calculate for you how much zakat that you have to pay, terus tekan butang pay je. So, terus boleh buat internet banking. Very easy. Okay, kalau dulu kena pergi counter. Semua orang malas kan nak pergi kan, kena pergi, beratur, bayar, apa semua. So, now not anymore. You can still do that but 
ada uh, convenience eh. And the disbursement, okay again eh, dia ada dua benda sekarang dekat sini. Satu is zakat collection, to collect zakat from those yang meet the condition tadi. The next one is the disbursement, nak distribute dekat yang eight beneficiaries tadi. Pun sama juga, under Islamic Religious Council. Okay. Because ada group yang buat on zakat kan, effectiveness of zakat. Uh, so those are the body lah ha, yang, yang in charge of zakat uh, collection and also distribution in Malaysia. So there are two main types of zakat which are zakat fitrah and zakat on wealth. Zakat fitrah ni very simple lah, eh, satu je. Zakat on wealth tu yang ada banyak. Eh. So fitrah comes from the word Arabic words which means the same as iftar, breaking a fast and comes from the same root word which means breakfast. So known as zakat of body eh, and zakat of Ramadan. So it is compulsory for every Muslim to make zakat fitrah compulsory on every slave, free man, male, female, young and old among the Muslim. So the head of household may pay the required amount for the other members. So the condition for zakat fitrah, senang kena ingat, zakat fitrah ni kita bayar masa ideal fitri ya, eh, bulan Ramadan, okay. Uh, must be a Muslim, again, non-Muslim is not obligated to pay zakat ni. Eh. Owns food, asset or money that is more than enough for his basic needs and the basic needs of his dependents for one full day. The day and night of first hour. Nampak condition dia. Simple sangat eh. Able to live between two periods, end of Ramadan and beginning of Shawwal. So a person who has passed away before the sunset or a child born after the sunset on the night of first Shawwal is not obliged to pay. Boleh faham eh, the date dia ni. Kita ada timeline dekat sini nanti eh. Right, so the period of performing zakat fitrah, ada banyak masa yang boleh buat eh. At the, can be performed at the beginning of Ramadan but it is obligatory on the night of Ideal fitri and is divided into five timing. So dia boleh buat anytime during Ramadan. Sebab tu kalau perasan bulan puasa dia ada counter zakat eh. So that is for zakat fitrah. Obligatory time. Ini yang masa wajib lah. Between sunset on the last day of Ramadan and the sunrise the next day. Boleh buat the timeline eh. Last day of Ramadan ah, buka puasa tu sampailah ke besok subuh tu. Ah, itu masa yang uh, sepatutnya bayarlah. After all, the most preferred time is after the sunset or the last day of Ramadan. After, eh, lepas buka, sampailah sebelum hari raya Aidil Fitri esoknya. Ha, so, kau tengok ramai juga yang bayar waktu tu eh. Permissible time throughout the month of Ramadan. Tak nak hassle, tak nak takut terlupa, whatever. Okay, bayarlah throughout the month of Ramadan. Makro, not preferred eh. After hari raya prayer but before sunset on the first of Syawal dah lepas solat dah baru nak bayar. Not preferred makro eh. Kalau ikutkan dekat sini until before kan. Most of those sebelum Hari Raya Adil Fitri. Haram. After sunset on the first of Syawal. So whatever nak buat mesti sebelum sunset on the first of Syawal. Okay. Lagi bagus sebelum solat Adil Fitri lah. Okay. So the main purpose of Zakat Fitra is to provide the poor with the means which they can celebrate the festival of breaking the fast along with the rest of the Muslim. Okay, levy on the fasting person based on the hadith. Um, fasting of the month of, will be hanging between earth and heaven so it will not be raised up to the divine presence without paying the zakat fitrah. It can also purify those who fast from any incident, act or speech and to help the poor and needy. So the, in Malaysia, the ruling of paying the value of the zakat fitrah in money instead of food. So kalau tengok the definition kan, kita nak provide the poor uh, with a means which is bagi makanan lah, eh, paling senang kan. But in Malaysia, the ruling dah kata kita gunakan uh, dalam bentuk duit. Tak adalah bawa beras pergi bagi kan. Uh, so in terms of money. And how do they decide uh, how much untuk bayar zakat fitrah? Okay, the um, amount uh, decided for zakat fitrah, the basis use is actually the price of rice, harga beras. Sebab apa? Sebab beras is kita kata uh, makanan ruji Malaysia eh. So kita gunakan harga uh, beras eh. So paying in the form of money can benefit the recipients since their needs are not just food and from the view of administrator it is more economic, more efficient and more effective in helping the needy. So the food or grain used to pay as a basis is rice and the amount is one Mana sebut ni dah, saya pula lupa. <laughs> Equivalent to about 2.6 kilo eh. So for year 2017, 7 ringgit lah. Uh, State Religious Authority akan review. Dia ada tiga harga kan, 7, 14, 21. Okay, so up to uh, the person who wants to pay eh. Biasa kita kata ikut harga beras yang dia makan lah ataupun yang dia guna lah untuk, untuk household dia eh. So which one 
boleh pilih nak 7, nak 14 atau uh, 21 eh. So the amount ni based on the market value of rice. So like I said, the rate pun sometimes varies from one state to another eh. Lain negeri, uh, lain sikit harga dia. Okay, yang ni saya skip je lah. You can try to answer soalan ni. Very simple question je. Have assessment ni. Okay, next one. Uh, macam, like, like I said eh, zakat fitrah tu very simple je. Satu je and you must understand the uh, time je eh. Time to pay the zakat uh, fitrah tu. Yang tadi tu je. Yang banyak sikit and the complex one is zakat on wealth eh. So uh, again eh, when we talk about zakat on wealth, the condition is that the wealth must be actually growing or have the potential for growth. Growth means that wealth yang kita ada tu will provide the owner with profit and benefit. For example, gold kan, harga gold keeps increasing. Uh. So gold is one of the wealth that is zakatable lah, kena bayar zakat eh. So the principles all growing assets are subject to zakat. Yes, zakat on wealth ni. So zakat fitrah ni kita dah settle, kita dah letak tepi. There are two types of zakat tadi kan. So fitrah dah settle. Now kita tengok zakat off, zakat on wealth. Eh. So zakat ni panjang sikit lah. Alright, so apa yang boleh zakat under zakat on wealth ni eh? Agricultural products. In Malaysia, exclusively for padi. Untuk gandum bali semua kita tak ada eh. Kita ada padi je. Livestock, okay, three types of livestock. Goats and sheep, cow and buffalo and also camel. Gold, origin of ruling for all derivation of money or currency. So gold and money, eh, inclusive of, of, of its derivation, is belongs to the same type of asset. So kalau ada cash, share, apa semua ni, akan masuk dalam kategori gold. Kenapa dia masuk dalam kategori gold? Because we want to use the gold value tu eh, untuk indicate the nisab tu nanti. Um, Alright. So, the derivation of asset that based on gold are as follows. Gold, of course, gold and money in the form of takafu product, EPF, investment and shares. Eh? Unit trust, mutual fund, EFT, uh, ETF and REITs ni semua masuk dalam kategori gold. Silver, jewelry and non-jewelry. Okay? So, dalam gold ni pun termasuklah gold jewelry and non-jewelry. Eh? Uh, mineral and treasure and also income. This is earned income. Eh? Which means income coming from employment, coming from professional, coming from rental and also income coming from gift and donation. Okay, yang atas ni tadi cool lah. <coughs> Alright, most importantly, all the zakatable asset must be only from the halal source. If there is any impermissible amount, first and foremost, one must refrain for engaging in prohibited activities. Zakat is not binding upon wealth acquired from haram sources like gambling. Apa ni gamble dapat 1 million nak bayar zakat? Oh no, tak boleh eh. Not from haram sources eh. And also sales of prohibited item. Jual dadah, dapat duit banyak. Oh, duit banyak nak bayar zakat. Tak boleh juga eh. So total amount of money acquired from unlawful activities must be given all in charity. Buat charity boleh eh, zakat tak boleh So money acquired unlawfully belongs lawfully to the owners of the wealth. Walaupun duit tu dapat unlawfully tapi kira lawful lah untuk the owner eh. So tadi uh, I show you eh zakat on wealth mestilah dekat wealth yang ada potential for growth eh. But for asset like property, land, building, vehicles, uh, precious stone and so on eh. They are not subject to zakat on wealth. Okay. Land building pun tak eh. Alright, so the first one, let's look at the first one eh, which is zakat on agricultural products and livestock. Ini pun very specific eh. So again, kita kata tadi in Malaysia, agricultural kita hanyalah yang zakat tebal hanyalah padi eh. So if uh, we look at the definition for agricultural product ni, they are actually in the forms of cereals or fruits eh. Non-basic food eh, and zakat on agricultural produce depends on the method of watering the plant. So how do we actually water the uh, padi plant tu? Contohnya eh, kalau lah sources which are taken from well, pond or treated water, 5% zakat. Natural resources, 10%. Nampak maknanya you do not have to spend anything guna air hujan je untuk pokok tu 
the zaka that has to pay is 10%. So, lagi satu, kalau uh, treated water ke apa, uh, then 5%. Lah. Bawah sikit lah ada lah amount of zakat dia. Eh. So, since most of agricultural produce today are not watered naturally and also need some extra work, fertilizing, insect disease controlling. Uh, so, in Malaysia, zakat for padi eh, is levied at the rate of 5%. So, zakat on agricultural produce is paid out after the agricultural produce right and cleansed. Okay, kita dah settle lah, dah, dah, dah harvest eh, baru bayar zakat. So, in Malaysia again, padi je eh, gandum, bali semua kita tak ada. So, um, many states eh, in Malaysia determine zakat on agricultural produce only imposed on padi. So, it must be paid after harvested at the rate of 5% from the total crops excluding subsidy given by government. So, the NISAP is 1360 gantang eh, which is equivalent to 106 kilogram. 1306 kilogram. So, if this farmer ni, dia ada padi yang dia timbang after the harvest more than 1306, then dia kena bayar zakat. So, the subsidy is treated Elmas Elmas Mustafa ini kita tengok lepas ni eh, which has to be added up with other income. So, ini contoh. That is why I said eh, the different different kilogram applies for different uh, state. So, for uh, Selangor, the NISAP is uh, 1306 kilogram for Negeri Sembilan pun sama uh, Kedah 1300 tapi ada 0.49 tak tahu kenapa uh, Melaka, Penang 1003 Sarawak rendah lagi, Pahang rendah lagi and Perlis semua ni lagi rendah lah Right So contohnya eh, this is the example how to calculate the zakat for padi eh. zakat padi, let's say total weight of padi is 2000 kilogram so value dia RM1.60 lah, 1 kilo. So total of pad, value of paddy is 3200 Remember for agricultural tadi, the zakat rate is 5%. So this value times 5% dapat 160 So this person, this farmer ni has to pay 160 as zakat for agriculture. Sikit je kan, 5% je. Nanti kita tengok yang later nanti lagi sikit, 2.5% je. Ini dia yang tinggi eh. The rest are all 2.5%. Alright. Zakat on livestock. So. Right, eh? So for zakat on livestock, again eh, for livestock kita ada different types of animals. So it is compulsory to the owner when it fulfills the condition to pay zakat. It is also based from hadith, eh? from 40 sheep it is imposed zakat of one sheep. Eh? So types of animals which are zakatable, uh, cow and buffaloes. So if the owner has more than 30 and eh, the nisab is 30, kena zakat lah. For goat and sheep, uh, 40. For camel, the nisab is 5. So, different animal, different. Eh? Dia punya nisab dia. And the howl is 1 year. So, the conditions other than the livestock must be fully owned by a Muslim and a free person. There are also conditions that needs to be fulfilled, which are animals must be pastured naturally. Animals should not be working animals. And the nisab must be maintained during the how let's say eh, dalam satu tahun tu kita kata kalau ada goods and sheep 40 dalam masa satu tahun uh, sampai tengah tahun ada yang mati or sakit eh, tak jadi 40 dah jadi 39 je then tak cukup ha, dia kata the nisab ni must be maintained during the how so kalau tak cukup then tak perlulah so this is the methods to calculate eh. so for example uh, it is actually the predetermined number practice by prophets and scholars eh, so the amount of zakat yang tadi lah so, for example, eh, macam tadi saya kata, if, uh, ni contoh untuk sheep and goat. Alright, so for 1 and 39, if you are the owner, ada 5 ekor sheep je. Uh, not zakatable, eh, nothing. Amat al zakat in sheep, nothing. From 40 to 120, 1. So, setiap lebih daripada 40 sampai 120, 
one. One means echo tu lah. Uh, one to one sampai 200 to uh, every additional uh, 100, one. So 400 to 500 baru lima echo. <coughs> Okay, uh, cows and buffalo Okay, dia ada lain sikit eh? Ada H dia pula kat sini So for 30 to 39 uh, Amount of zakat is one uh, One bull eh For 40 to 59 One cow H dia two year or more uh, Sampailah dekat sini lah Kalau want more than 120 Cow and buffalo uh, Amount of zakat dia empat Okay But uh, in Malaysia the practice uh, Tak pernah pula bawa Nampak orang bawa lembu pergi bayar zakat kan? Ha, tak ada. Because in Malaysia, kita farmer ni akan bayar zakat according to the value of the livestock. Let's say macam tadi dia kena bayar satu sheep. Eh. Kita ambil value seekor uh, kambing. Okay, so zakat institution only accept zakat payment in form, in form of cash and not in kind. So proper accounting treatment and more efficient distribution to Zakat resipien. Ha, teruklah kalau semua nak bawa rempah kambing kan. Kau tengok nanti zakat institution ni belakang ni ada apa? Ada kandang banyak letak all the animals. Eh? So tak adalah. So the payment of zakat for um, livestock ni is actually in terms of cash. Eh? So dia akan tengoklah the value of the livestock. So the keyword here ni is the value of livestock. Eh? Walaupun calculation dia macam ni ikut berapa ekor. But kita akan ambil the equivalent eh? untuk memudahkan pembayaran. Alright, next one is zakat on gold. So kita dah tengok zakat on agriculture. So remember in Malaysia, agriculture hanya ada padi je. Next one kita ada zakat on livestock. So ada different amount eh, for uh, sheep, uh, cow and also uh, camel. Eh. So different amount. So next would be zakat on uh, gold. Okay, so here for zakat on gold ni, the obligation to pay is um, also in the Quran, Sunnah and Ijma'ah. Eh. So the Quran state that it is compulsory to pay zakat and uh, zakat on gold and also uh, silver. And uh, our Muslim jurists have unanimously agree eh, throughout the, all generation that zakat is obligatory on these two currencies of gold and silver. Okay, gold and silver, bronze tak payah. So, dua je lah, gold and silver. So, these two metals is uniquely zakatable in whatever form. So, namanya pun gold and silver, bila ada ayat dekat sini, eh, uh, Uniquely zakatable in whatever form, which means if you have gold currency, if you have solid bar, ada gelang, ada rantai, eh, uh, or unrefined, eh, adalah mas, adalah bentuk, whatever pun, as long as the weight is above the nisab, that is zakatable. Okay, saya letak warna merah dekat sini. Muslim jurists also unanimously agree that money and gold are belongs to the same category. Macam tadi kita tengok kan, money ni termasuklah uh, EPF, Takaful, ASD, shares eh? and the latest fatwa ruling has decided to combine gold and money including Takaful and also investment to the same category of asset. So during zakat assessment, these three items must be combined. So kita kena combine dulu gold, gold investment, money, Takaful, saving, investment, shares semua tu combine dulu if the total exceed the nisab, then it is subject to zakat payment. Okay, I have the calculation later. I will show you. Eh, kita masuk kita tengok the website nanti macam ni. They they calculate. Eh, so this is the example. All right, gold jewelry and investment. So what should we do? If you, what should you do eh, if you have gold jewelry and also investment? So first of all, you have to determine the value of non jewelry gold savings and investment and the gold jewelry that exceed uruf hmm. dah tadi cerita how lepas tu cerita nisab ha, ni dah cerita uruf lah eh so we have a lot of arabic words here um and b money in the form of cash and cash equivalent Right, eh? and then uh, money in the form of cash and cash equivalent. So first of all, we have to determine the value of savings in financial institutions. So berapa account yang ada dekat bank. So you have to total up all the amount, all the savings. Eh? And then withdrawal. 
of cash value in Takaful and insurance policy. EPF saving at the age of 55 and above, hopeful debtors kalau ada and savings at other places. Ah, saving bawah, bawah bantal, bawah katil pun dalam rumah semua ni kan. So, termasuk dalam kategori money in the form of cash and cash equivalent. Shares and investment at capital and also money market. Alright, so first of all we have to determine the shares at bursa ataupun foreign bonds yang ada. Value of unit trust and mutual fund, ETF and also REITs eh, and whatever investment yang ada. And we have to make some adjustment kalau ada non-shariah compliant income. And also capital gain. So the formula here is sum of A plus B plus C minus D kalau ada. Dapat satu amount. So the excess ni must meet the NISAP. Then multiply by 2.5%. So again eh, for this. The NISAP is actually harga gold eh. 85 gram of gold. So 85 gram of gold kita ambilkan harga uh, in RM. So kita kira yang ni tadi whatever amount that you get here eh. Kalau lebih daripada amount NISAP tu contohnya 18,000 katakan. 80 gram, 85 gram of gold uh, equivalent to 18,000. So whatever you have here tambah-tambah-tambah more than 18,000. So kena lah um, zakat eh, at 2.5%. Okay, kita tengok dulu yang ni. Lepas ni ada lagi calculation dekat sini eh. So even though the all the above must be combined. Nampak kat sini tadi kata, saya kata semua combine kan. Semua ni combine dalam satu sebagai goal eh. But kita akan tengok juga uh, one by one eh. So that you can understand better bila when we talk about zakat on goal. Okay, apa yang kita kena buat apa yang kita kena uh, kira eh. Alright. So four types of zakatable gold eh. Ada dua jenis. Satu gold that is not worn as jewelry. Simpan je untuk accumulation of wealth pun boleh. Such as brilliance and coins. Ha, ada juga eh. Jewelry made of gold and silver tapi simpan. Tak guna, tak pakai eh. Not worn as jewelry. Ha. Dia punya keyword here dekat sini is not worn as jewelry. Or jewelry used unlawfully such as men are forbidden to wear jewelry made of gold, silver and any other substance. So zakat is obliged on men jewelry if exit misap. Ha. Tak tahulah kenapa lelaki ni dia ada banyak emas. Yang dia tak pakai. Boleh juga. You can also invest eh, in gold. Eh. Tapi ni jewelry yang eh, dia pakai contohnya. Ha. Pun sama jugalah. If the jewelry exceed the nisab. Gold or silver utensil. Ini ini forbid, forbidden eh. Pakai sudu garpu gold ni. Eh. Islam forbids the use of gold and silver as kitchen and dining utensil. Because that is a feature of a lavish way of living. So all item are zakatable. Eh, kalau ada gold and silver utensil dengan mangkuk, sudu garpu dengan mangkuk, tak lakuk sudu garpu eh. So it is not disputed among Muslim scholars that whenever gold are used in a forbidden manner, they are also subject to zakat. Okay, as long as it is a gold eh. So it is compulsory to pay zakat if gold meet the nisab of 85 gram for gold, it must also meet the haul. So the nisab is based on what Prophet said and eh? there is no sadaqah on whatever is left then. 20 miskol of gold. So 20 miskol sama dengan uh, 20 dinar. And kita convert lah. 20 dinar equal equivalent to 4.25 gram. Which is 20 dirham eh, equal to 85 gram. So uh, yang ni semua tak payah tengok. So apa yang kita ada what we apply in Malaysia is that kena bayar zakat for gold if the nisa uh, meet the amount of 85 gram. Okay, 85 gram. So the keyword here is 85 gram lah. Alright. Jewelry made of combination. Eh, combination of pearl, diamond, other precious stone. Uh, kena buat estimation. Eh. Estimation is needed to determine the weight only for gold. So the rate is 2.5% from the total amount of gold and silver that exceed NISAP after a period of one year. Okay, kita contoh kat sini ada fikir yang salah kat sini. Okay, Husna has two gold coins with 20 gram each, 85 gram old-fashioned gold jewelry that she doesn't wear once, 50 gram broken gold and she also invests 10 gram in Sharia compliant gold investment. So this is the calculation. Two gold coins, 20 gram each, eh? so 40, 22 times 20, 40. Dia ada old fashion gold jewelry, old fashion or patah dengan apa kan. Still kita calculate eh. Kalau dah kata rosak, still gold tapi rosak dia dah tak pakai patah dengan apa. Still kira as gold eh. Kena masuk dalam calculation. Broken gold 50 gram, 
syariah compliant gold investment 80 uh, 80 plus 10 gram so total 185 gram remember ni sub kita tadi 85 gram so here dia dah lebih daripada 85 gram dia ialah 185 gram eh, 185 gram so this is the value yang kita ada kat sebelah ni lah so the value the weight of gold memang lebih eh, more than this sub of 85 gram of gold so dia boleh calculate dia punya zakat as 35150 total eh Nampak? Dia lebih 85 tapi for gold not worn as jewelry ni not worn as jewelry ni dia memang simpan je eh. Kita tak ambil different. Nanti kan you wonder kenapa lebih dari 85 tak ambil dia 100 kan 85 tu yang yang red 185 lebih 85 yang lebih hanya 100 lah tak. Gold not worn as jewelry kita tak ambil macam tu. Kita kira total terus. So is 185 gram the total is 35150 terus darab dengan 2 point 5%, so zakat yang dikena bayar is 879. Any questions so far? Tak ada soalan? Doktor nak tanya, hmm. yang nisab 85 of gold ni bukan ke emas hmm. 999? Ah, nanti kita tengok. Oh, okay. Kita biasa kita ambil semua tu je eh. I mean, Uh, harga 99 lagi mahal lah daripada 916 tu. Dia ada different category kan. Nanti kita tengok the application of gold tu eh. The application of, of zakat on gold tu. So this is basically uh, the calculation for gold yang uh, not worn as jewelry. Eh, kita ambil terus 85 gram of gold. Harga dia dia memang tak ambil uh, 999 sebab tu average eh, 85 gram of gold di setiap state. Nanti saya tunjuk dalam website eh. Setiap state. Sometimes tu dia dah bagi dah nisab untuk 85 gram of gold ni. Dia ambil average je. Dia bukan spesifik untuk harga. Kita tak kita tak ambil harga gold tu kita darab dengan bas 999 harga berapa kan. Alright example tu Anis has 100 gram broken gold and old fashioned jewelry that she has not worn even once during the year. Nampak keyword dekat sini eh. We are still uh, looking at gold not worn as jewelry. So kalau dia ada jewelry rantai tapi dia tak pakai langsung dalam satu tahun tu itu masuk dalam kategori not worn. This is different eh because kalau worn treatment dia dah lain. Kalau dah pakai even sekali treatment dia dah lain. Tapi kalau tak pernah pakai langsung treatment dia macam ni eh. So the current value of gold is 190. So the total value of her gold is 19,000. So nampak 100 gram lebih dari 85 kan. So amount of zakat she has to pay is ambil total darab dengan 2.5 percent. Sama juga dengan example 3 eh. Malik is a businessman. He has been keeping some gold bullion and coin in his safe box in a bank scene last year. Total weight of his gold is 1000 gram for bullion and 51 gram for coins. Is Malik has to pay zakat and how much should he pay? So the current value of gold is 150 per gram. So this is for the purpose of example je eh. Saya tak letak ini which type of gold. So kita letak uh, in general katakan harga gold untuk masa ni is 150 gram ni lama sekarang tak ada sekarang almost 300 eh satu gram so the question is does Malik has to pay zakat yes sebab apa apa yang dia ada is more than the nisab eh more than 85 gram so the total value of his uh, gold is 157650 darab lah whatever dia ada dengan 150 kan so the amount of zakat that he has to pay is calculated as follow 2.5% Okay, so far okay. Now kita tak tengok lagi harga spesifik untuk gold tu eh. And nanti kita tengok different state pun ada pakai different nisab. I mean nisab amount lah. 80, 80 gram of gold still 80 gram of gold tapi dia convert ke RM tu. Because nanti you remember kita gold kan masuk dengan cash money semua nanti kan. So the total tu the number yang cash tu. Different state eh. Alright. Another category is gold jewelry that is worn by women. Yang tadi tak pakai langsung simpan je. Second kategori yang pakai. Ha, macam saya pakai ni kan. Ha, rantai pakai, gelang pakai. So whatever yang yeah, subang semua pakai. Ha, itu masuk kategori gold that is worn by women. So jewelry that is obtained for personal use as ornament and used lawfully by women is not zakatable. In general, kalau beli emas pakai untuk perhiasan, not zakatable. However, if the amount exceeds the customary amount, the zakat will be 
impose. So in Malaysia, the customary amount, kita kata uruf, eh? uruf is an Arabic word which means customary. Maknanya tak normal lah for you to have like 100 kilogram gold uh, untuk pakai. Uh, so uh, urufnya bukan. Eh? So whatever uh, state, eh? kalau tengok dekat sini dalam table ni, different state, they have different uh, uruf. Eh? Uh, so here, uh, only jewelry that reaches uruf is zakatable. So the customary amount for Selangor and Wilayah Prosekutuan is 800 gram for gold. So if you have gold jewelry yang you pakai, the berat dia bila kita timbang semua more than 800 gram and you live in Selangor, itu zakatable. So di Malaysia again, eh, you must go back to the original uh, rule kita, all these religious matter are governed by the state. That is why customary limit pun lain-lain. Look at Terengganu. Customary limit dia 850 gram. Selangor 800 kan? Terengganu 850. Tapi calculation dia difference. Yang terlebih tu je dia kira takat. Johor pun sama. Selangor pun sama. 800 gram lower figure tapi ambil the difference. Uh, KL pun sama dengan Selangor eh. Sarawak 775 tapi calculation dia kita tak ada. Faham 500 gram je, 500 gram dia dah kira uruf dah. Orang faham tak pakai mas sangat kot eh. So, tapi calculation dia total. Nampak tak? Yang ni difference eh. Yang ni maknanya, if you have more than 85 gram, you kena tax, uh, kena tax pula, kena zakat on the different. Tapi di paham, you ada more than 500 gram, you'll be taxed on total. Ah, Negeri Sembilan 200, Melaka 200. Different juga, different juga. Perlis 170. Penang 165, Sabah, Kedah, Perak. In Kelantan tak ada eh. Kelantan tak ada. Adalah berapa kilogram pun. As long as you pakai. That is not zakatable. Sebabnya go back to this first sentence eh. Jewelry that is obtained for personal use. And used lawfully by women is not zakatable. Just that this state je impose zakat. Tapi dia letak customary limit. Boleh faham eh the difference between this and the first one tadi eh. First one tadi tak pakai langsung. Memang simpan je. Yang ni pakai as jewelry. Right. Example here for Aziza, she has 900 gram of gold jewelry and she won at least once for the whole year. So the current value of gold is 150 per gram. So zakatable amount that Puan Aziza has to pay is the difference between total gold and uruf. Ini kita ambil macam Selangor punya lah eh. Selangor and KL eh. Dia bayar difference. And more than uh, 800 gram. So, uruf dia 800 gram, dia ada 900 gram, the difference is 100 gram, assuming the current value is 150 per gram. So, dia kena bayar 100 times 150 which is 15,000 times 2.5% equivalent to 275 ringgit. Puan Aminah ada 300 gold jewelry, she wore at least once for the whole year. Her jewelry is not subject to zakat because the uruf in Selangor is 800 gram. Nampak? Orang ni lebih 900 kena bayar zakat on the difference. Uh, Puan Aminah ni 300 je tak sampai uruf. So zakat uh, jewelry dia not subject to zakat. Okay, boleh? Boleh, Dota. Alright, tak soalan eh. Okay. Ini figure saya tak sempat nak update eh. Gold value at 22nd May 2021. Saya ada new slides malam saya tak sempat nak letak dekat sini. As at yesterday, so figure dekat sini 300 lebih lah. So the figure memang naik eh. So ini kalau if you look at the gold type here, ada 999, 950, 916, sampailah ke bawah. So the uh, information yang kita pakai eh, so for gold collection, let's say ada banyak orang ni dia ada mixed purity kan, 24 carat ada, 22 carat ada, 20 carat ada. So in case you wonder, orang kata oh pakai 24 carat, 24 carat tu gold dia 999. Kalau kata 22 carat or 20 carat, inilah the gold type dia. Some uh, calculation, uh, some um, gold dia tunjuk in carats kan, dia tak tunjuk in gold type. Uh, so especially for men, eh, so you know lah uh, dia punya berapa carat nak bagi eh. <laughs> Kalau nak tengok dekat sini lah. So here in case eh, the gold collection ni ada semua. Valuation can be made according to the value of respective type. Eh? So the value can be obtained from Zakat Institution website such as Lembaga Zakat Selangor and the example provided uh, gold value according to level of purity are as follows. So if you have a mixture and you know, okay, ini 24 karat, ini 22 karat, ini 20 karat. 
guna harga macam yang ada dekat sini. Example tadi yang saya bagi tu very general je. Kita tak ikut the gold type tu. Right? By right the gold type ni lagi pure lagi mahal. Yeah, so in the question uh, if you have different carrots ni or different gold type then guna harga ikut gold type. Because we are not looking at the apa ni gold type or value eh. We are looking at the gram tu. The, the Berapa gram yang ada, berapa gram yang dia Uh, pakai dan berapa gram yang uh, berapa gram ataupun uh, the applicable uh, uruf eh, based on the state tu right so this is the amount dia memang memang different lah so issues pertaining to zakat on gold ok ada isu eh tak ada semua bulan bintang je so isu dia satu gold business ha, orang yang ada kedai emas ni macam nak kira tax dia <coughs> for gold business the zakat is imposed under the principle on Zakat on business. Remember kita tadi tengok tadi dua benda je kan? <laughs> Untuk orang Kelantan. <laughs> ha, betul lah tu Luqman. Duduk Kelantan pakai emas 2-3 kilo kat badan pun <laughs> tak kena zakat eh. Ha, duduk Selangor, duduk Perak, duduk KL. Ha, kena lah. <coughs> so boleh beli dan boleh uh, pakai. And then have to pay zakat for jewelry. Yang dipakai eh, yang worn tu tak payah bayar zakat. Yang tak pakai still kena bayar zakat lah. <coughs> Okay. So untuk gold business dia akan uh, gunakan zakat on business. Dia bukan zakat on jewelry macam kita eh. Gold investment. Okay again eh. Kalau investment tu in the form of physical gold. Zakat is categorized under gold not used as jewelry. So ada uh, gold investment dalam bentuk gold bar. Ha, itu dikira under gold not used as jewelry. Kalau physical gold tu tak ada. Transaction tu tak boleh eh. Dia unpermissible contract. Sekarang ni banyak gold investment kan. Eh. You kena tengok gold tu wujud ke tak exist or not eh. Yang syariah uh, approve is physical gold tu mesti ada eh. Uh, zakat on money taken place and zakat is imposed on principle. So kalau gold investment kita tengok yang ni lah eh. Kalau ada gold tu. Gold used as critical medical purpose. Pakai dekat kaki pula. Pakai dekat gigi atau pakai dekat hidung eh. For medical purposes. Not subject to zakat. Dia jadi jewelry kan. Jewelry pakai, jewelry tak pakai. Uh, gold investment. Gold pawning or arohnu. Okay. <coughs> arohnu ada different contract eh. Uh, Kod Hassan. Uh, arohnu and wadiah. Maknanya simpan je dekat situ. Ujrah. So zakat treatment bawah sekali ni. Tak apa nak nampak eh. Gold that has been pawned at arohnu is still considered as full ownership. So the calculation is based on the total value of gold minus loan minus safekeeping fees. Ini untuk arwah nu saja eh. So this is the computation dia lah. Untuk gold, uh, gold yang duduk dekat arwah nu. So Norma Pond her two gold necklace and one bracelet with a total weight of 30 gram. Assuming the current value of gold is 150 per gram. So the total value of gold is 150 times 30 gram, 4,500. Pergi arah nu, letak mas, they can get cash eh. So she can borrow up to 70% of the total value eh. 70% from this one is 3,150. So the safekeeping fees is 24 per month. She is now on the 6th month. Still kena bayar zakat. The calculation dia, total value, which is 4,500 tadi. Tolak dengan yang dia pinjam. Dia hanya dapat cash 3150. Tolak lagi dengan uh, safekeeping fees. Sebulan RM24 darat dengan 6. So dapatlah 1206. So the value must be total up with other asset based on gold nisab or times 2.5%. Katakanlah dia tak ada simpanan lain. Dia cuma ada arah nun je. So 1206 darat 2.5 dia kena bayar zakat RM30. What about zakat on white gold? Oh, Rasa pakai white gold kan? So white gold ni dah campur-campur eh. Dia bukan anak yellow gold. Dia dah, dia dah pergi bleach. So Selangor kata white gold is not zakatable. You want to know other states then you kena google carilah eh. Saya letak dekat sini yang 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 widely used lah eh. Which is Selangor. Selangor Fatwa Committee kata white gold is not zakatable. Alright next is zakat on money. Sekejap eh.
All right, eh? so for zakat on money, <coughs> money is used as a measurement of value, medium of exchange and storage of value. So adalah both intrinsic and flat money have the purchasing power like gold. Eh? So for money, the total nisab for zakat of current value is also 85 gram and the rate of zakat is 2.5%. Sama juga kan. The rate of zakat memang tak berubah 2.5%. And untuk zakat on money, kita still equivalentkan dia dengan 85 grams eh. So for example, if you have saving in conventional account, ah, lain sikit calculation dia. Bandingkan dengan saving in uh, Islamic accounts eh. So here for zakat calculation for conventional accounts, must exclude any interest or impermissible element. So example of saving account transaction during the year, contohnya simpan 22,000 keluar 2,000 uh, dapat interest 200 interest uh, saving account eh and then out lagi 1,005 in lagi, out lagi, in lagi ending balance 9,600 uh, okay so additional note, the NISAP for the hull is 14865. Okay, maksud 14865 ni dekat sini ialah harga 85 gram gold. Nampak? Untuk money, sebab so money pun kita akan zakat dia based on gold kan. Kita ikut uh, NISAP uh, gold. So NISAP untuk untuk satu hull ni, untuk tahun ni ialah 14865. Uh, which is equivalent to 85 gram of gold juga. So, zakat calculation is based on the last balance of the year. Kita tak ambil yang atas ni, kita ambil the last balance. Tutup akaun hujung tahun, berapa balance? Eh? <coughs> so, 19,600. Let's say tadi nisab kita 14,865. So, the last balance, tolak interest. Tak nak interest, eh? sebab ini conventional account. We don't want interest dalam tu. Uh, so, dapat 19,400. So, the rate of zakat is 2.5%. So, the zakat amount is 400 and 85 ringgit. Ha, ayat ni yang tengah ni tak boleh tengok lah eh. Kita tak pakai 2.57 kita pakai 2.5 je. But the total amount must be combined with other asset that is based on nisab of gold. Eh. So ni contoh kat sini kalau dia kena bayar 500 ringgit ni uh, sorry dia kena bayar 485 ringgit ni katakan contoh dia tak ada duit lain. Ini je duit dia. And dia tak ada gold pun. Ha, so this is the amount of zakat that uh, he or she has to Okay, what about saving in Islamic account? Oh, ni ada I kan, wadiah semua tu. Okay, the different is the interest lah. So, kalau conventional tadi, namanya is interest. But under Islamic, namanya is hibah. Nampak? Same account. Kita gunakan same account. Tapi 200 ni hibah. Hibah is permissible. Dan must be included in zakat calculation. Alright, so contoh dekat sini tadi. Uh, Nisab pun sama juga. Kita still ambil last balance yang sama 19,600 tapi sebab 200 ni ialah hibah dan this is Islamic account. Zakat dia lagi. RM19,600 ambil balance ni times 2.5% dapat 465. So kita ambil semua. Kita tak payah tolak interest. Tadi sana tadi kita tolak interest eh. So sini tak perlu tolak. Because this is under Islamic accounts. What if you have multiple savings account? Dalam banyak account, banyak bank. Kena kira macam ni lah, satu-satu. Ambil ending balance setiap bank. Last balance eh, last balance. Total dulu. Let's say account 1, 4,000, account 2, 1,000, account 3, 10,000. Total amount, 15,000. Still kita compare dengan amount tadi lah. Kita gunakan uh, nisab yang sama lah eh, 14,865 tadi tu. So ni lebih, so darab lah dengan 2.5%. So semua calculation eh, is actually based on the total. Kecuali gold uh, worn as jewelry tadi ambil difference. Yang lain semua kita ambil total. Eh? Okay. Ini yang saya nak tunjuk. Uh, this is from Majlis Agama Islam dan Adab Melayu Berak. Eh? Dalam website dia dah letak macam ni dah. Kadar nisab wang simpanan dan perniagaan senilai dengan harga 20 mis kol emas atau bersamaan dengan 85 gram. Nampak dia letak harga ikut uh, bulan dan ikut uh, nisab dia dalam RM. Uh, masa ni saya ambil tahun lepas ni bulan baru bulan 4 eh. So you can find the same thing. Then you can see eh from uh, 
uh, year 2000 nisab hanyalah 2009 kita ambil bulan 1 pun tak apa eh sampailah tahun 2021 nisab daripada 2000 dah jadi 20000 so if saving account kita guna nombor ni kita guna 20579 ni if your saving account multiple account tadi total total total, total lebih daripada 2579 multiple saving interest conversion rate tak kena tolaklah macam tadi kena tolak dulu macam ni kan tadi macam ni kan ha interest ni tolak dulu ambil satu amount from from uh, conventional bank tolak dulu kalau islamic account tak perlu buat macam ni okey lukman boleh eh right yang lain okey ke so untuk islamic account kita ambil total je whatever balance dulu eh ada satu moment tu calculation dia is ambil the lowest balance ah pitam nak tengok so you have to go through dalam satu tahun tu transaction tu mana amount paling rendah sekali amount tu lah kena kira zakat but not efficient not practical kan so uh, based on the majlis ulama islam they they uh, come up with a new measure which is the last balance senang cukup tutup account hujung bulan uh, hujung bulan hujung tahun berapa balance ha, itulah yang kena kira dalam calculation eh untuk kira zakat Right, so this is from uh, Perak eh. So sama je lah if you find for this year pun, you will see something like this. So the figure, the amount yang kita ada dekat sini is the 85 gram of gold. Senang, kita tak ada darat-darat dah. Dia dah bagi, dia dah bagi nisab dalam bentuk RM. So kita guna je nombor ni eh. If you want to compute for your savings contohnya kan. Alright, issues lagi eh pertaining to zakat on money. Ya. Tak pernah tak ada isu eh. So kalau if you go to website eh zakat punya website ada macam-macam isu macam-macam uh, guidelines eh yang ada eh. Kejap lagi saya boleh tunjuk kalau ada masa. Alright, uh, saving in tabung haji. Okay. Tabung haji has pay zakat on behalf of depositors eh. So dia dah bayar zakat kan. Uh, kita simpan dia dah bayar zakat. So depositor do not have to pay zakat on money cap in tabung haji. However, saving in tabung haji must be included during NISAP evaluation either during zakat assessment on gold based asset or income based asset. Tak payah bayar zakat tapi dalam calculation saving kena masuk jumlah tabung haji tu. Contoh dekat sini kan. Uh, let's say orang ni, okay saving in tabung haji 5,000. Tabung haji pay zakat in this portion. Tak bayar zakat eh. Saving at the place 10,000. So total 50,000. Total ni dah exit nisab kan? Katakan kita guna nisab yang sama juga kan? Nisab dalam example tadi 14,856 tu. So orang ni bila total ni dia kena bayar zakat lah. Sebab total campur dengan tabung haji dia dah lebih dari nisab. Tapi zakat dia nampak hanyalah on the 10,000. Sebab 5,000 ni tabung haji dah bayar zakat. Boleh faham tak example ni? Maksudnya macam mana? Okay, we need to total dulu termasuk tabung haji. Walaupun tabung haji dah bayar zakat, when you compute your total saving, masukkan juga tabung haji. If the total exceed nisab, which means kena bayar zakat. Tapi zakat only on the portion yang belum kena zakat lagi, which is exclude the tabung haji amount. Eh? Okay, alright. What about parents who keep their money in child account? Parents punya duit letak dalam account anak. Depend on the intention. If the intention is for give, the money belongs to the child and zakat assessment is made based on the ownership of individual child. If the intention is for nominee, saja letak je, tumpang letak kat account anak, real owner is the parent, so the parent must include the money in their zakat assessment. Imposing two zakat on one asset. Boleh tak? Uh, two type of zakat on the same asset for the same year. Okay, so tak ada double payment eh. So at the end of the how, contohnya total balance in saving account is 25,000. If this money, uh, amount of money is inclusive of current year income, for example 5,000, so the 5,000 must be deducted or excluded from the investment. Zakat is imposed on the balance for 20,000. Maknanya satu tahun tu satu tak ada double payment for zakat eh. Right, zakat on shares. So everybody know what shares is. So there are two main types of shares and eh? zakat on non-listed share and zakat on listed shares. So zakat on share will not be imposed on the investor if the company has already paid zakat on its business. If the company does not pay zakat on its business, then the holder has to pay zakat on 
shares. Okay. Dan kita kira at the end of each house. Cukup tahun lah, cukup setahun lah eh. So for non-listed share, non-listed share ni kalau share ownership in private companies lah ataupun koperasi. So in principle the business entity have to pay zakat at company level. Okay, so company level bayar. If the company did not pay zakat on its business, then the shareholder must pay zakat due on his shares. Eh? The calculation based on the portion of individual ownership. Let's say zakatable asset for the company 100,000. Zakat for company 2,500. Kita own 20% shares from that company. So ambillah 20% dari 2,500. Eh? Kena kira ikut ni dulu, ikut business dulu. What about zakat on listed shares? Main saham bursa ni macam mana? Itu listed share. So this guideline yang ada dekat sini follow fatwa selangor. So it is applicable to all kind of investment in this country under the SC lah. So sample dia ni lah eh. Bonus issue right? Issue unit trust apa semua ni. So how use is the how of the portfolio? Mesti invest for a complete Ya, yeah. kita tak track hal for each share of the counter lah je. No lah kan kalau ada 10 counter nak kena tengok pula counter ni dah cukup setahun ke belum ke. Itu tak kita kira semua je. Uh, so kita tak track satu-satu eh. So kita ambil market value at hal completion plus net profit kalau ada times 2.5%. Okay so approach uh, calculate zakat on share ni boleh juga on the lowest value eh. Macam macam uh, KL, Penang, Melaka Negeri Sembilan. They use the lowest value. Tapi Selangor guna market value. Ini pun different juga kan. Eh? Depends on state. But our purpose today here is actually to introduce to you that there are uh, the basics uh, of uh, zakat calculation ni ialah ini. But the rate and then the, the the apa kita kata the mechanism tu bergantung kepada state eh. Different state ada different uh, calculation. So this is from saya tak ingat ibarat macam mana saya ambil hari tu. So pengiraan uh, untuk uh, shares eh. Let's say orang ni dia ada saham di bursa. Untung yang ditunaikan, unit trust. Dia ada ETF, dia ada REITs. And lain-lain pelaburan in foreign capital market. Okay semua dah cukup. Ini ialah nilai pada tarikh cukup hal. Tolak brokerage fee, tolak dividend yang tak patuh syariah. Tolak modal yang tak patuh syariah. Uh -huh, ini semua dia keep track lah eh. Eh, nilai saham dan pelaburan wajib zakat, subjek tu zakat, semua ni tolak yang tak boleh ni tinggal 464,500. So, uh, darablah dengan 2.5% eh. Alright, again issues on zakat uh, on shares, uh, zakat ownership with restriction macam mana kalau ada, kalau beli saham tapi through loan, ASB purchase with Maybank loan. So, Investment portfolio is deemed as incomplete ownership. So zakat will be exempted. Investment in non-shariah compliant shares. Uh, non-shariah, kita tengok terus je zakatability status ni. Initial capital je zakat gain and dividend receive. They're not uh, shariah compliant eh. So not permissible and not zakatable. Okay, so kalau nak detail lagi boleh pergi kepada asset Islamic Capital Market guideline eh. So this is basically... Uh, the basics lah eh for zakat on shares. What about ESOS eh? Some employees bila kerja dekat certain company dah lama dapat ESOS employee share option scheme dapat for free eh. So it can be share bought in cash. So kalau beli saham tu bayar cash. ESOS ni is uh, for the employee to get uh, shares from the company pada harga yang lebih rendah eh. So if the share bought in cash calculation sama macam calculation zakat on shares. So kalau beli share through loan. So the loan installment will be deducted from the worth of share at the end of how. Dia jadi macam kita kira aruh nu tadi tu kan. Kita tolak amount of loan. Okay. Zakat on takaful product. Untuk takaful product ni we have two eh. General takaful and family takaful. But you must know for general takaful ni all these contributions are not zakatable. For general takaful eh, motor vehicle, marine personal accident, health semua ni, medical semua ni, not zakatable. Yang zakatable is family takaful. Sebab konsep family takaful ni macam life insurance. Okay. So, consider as saving eh. 
family takaful considered as saving uh, and zakat is imposed under the principle of zakat on money. But kita kira based on withdrawable cash value. So at the end of every year, eh, insurance company, takaful company akan bagilah uh, the withdrawable cash value. How much is the cash value? So cash value ni kita akan masuk dalam computation untuk bayar zakat. So the money can be utilized anytime eh, without invalidating the policy. So this is the formula. Minimum cash value to be retained eh, ialah withdrawable cash value. So zakat is cash value withdrawal times 2.5%. If the cash value is less than nisab, the calculation must be combined with other asset based on gold nisab. Okay, because remember takaful pun masuk dalam gold dengan money tadi eh. So issues on zakat on takaful. Uh, satu claim eh for general and family allowance. So based on zakat ruling income, zakat income imposed on any type of income including employment related uh, benefit eh. Early surrender. Uh, what about early surrender? Okay, any time surrender eh. So kalau kita tengok zakatability status ni, surrender maksudnya macam kita withdraw the money lah. It is not zakatable upon receiving the money. So kalau money simpan lagi dalam saving tu, dia kira normal saving. Nampak konsep dia eh, dia kira whatever kita simpan dan ada potential for growth yang tu kena zakat. Sama juga kalau uh, simpan family takafu tak ada withdraw eh, biar je kat dalam tu. But we need the withdrawal amount tu untuk kita kirakan uh, zakat eh. For maturity and tata to some uh, covered eh. So for money received bila takaful dah mature pun not obliged to pay zakat. Sebab tadi every year dia dah bayar zakat kan untuk cash withdrawal amount walaupun dia tak withdraw lagi. Uh, sebab dia dah bayar every year. So bila dia withdraw je bila dah, bila takaful tu expired je or mature dia dapat duit tu then they don't have to pay uh, zakat lah. Unless selama-lama dia pegang polisi tu dia tak pernah bayar zakat. Bila dia dapat je duit on maturity tu then dia kena kira lah. Kena backdate lah the zakat eh. Alright and last one is zakat for business. Okay zakat for business. Uh, if the person has a business eh. Uh, so proprietor, partnership eh. Subject to zakat if it fulfills the condition. Condition ni is must be a Muslim, a free person. Wealth must be from halal sources. Meet the nisab at the end of hal, which is 2.5% or equivalent to 85 gram of gold. Uh, nilai dia mesti sama macam tadi lah. Meet the hal and must be from productive property. Cash, shares, bond. Uh, business must be fully owned at the date of hal. So ini basic equation or step to assess zakat on business. Ambil cash, stock, debtors, tolak creditors. Ha, senang je dia punya calculation dia. Ambil current portion je eh. Zakat payable is the net current asset je. Because remember plan equipment tu tak ada long term asset tak termasuk dalam ni eh. So the zakat payable is is all the current assets minus all the current liability. Okay. That is for business saja. So this is for small business. Sama juga end of haul completion. Ha, this is how business should calculate their uh, zakat eh. Net current asset. Uh, Mesti exit the nisab. Sini. Exit the nisab and then bayarlah 2.5%. Oh, nak nota sini dah ada jawapan eh. So kalau tengok kat sini, wealth below subject to zakat on wealth, accept land and building. Ni kita tahulah land and building tak eh. And then... Uh, Habis part one. Oh, sakit jam lebih juga part one ni kali. Any question tak for part one ni? Saya tengok sekejap part tu ni ada. Oh, part tu sikit je. Right, if you have no questions, saya nak continue je eh. Uh, with the second part ni, sikit je lagi. Uh, 
Boleh eh? Kita nak tanya uh, Kalau gold tu kita gadai sebab nak bayar hospital bill ke apa Still kena bayar zakat ke? Yang arah nu tadi tu? Ha kena check the purpose tu. But if kalau konsepnya uh, goal tu bawa pergi ke arah nu untuk ambil cash, the calculation ni tadi macam tu lah. Sebab kita, dia tak ada mention eh, apa purpose kita nak cash tu. Cuma kita pergi letak dekat arah nu je. Dan dikira goal tu sebagai kita punya goal lagi. Because you get the cash, lepas nanti boleh claim balik kan. The goal tu. Because sekarang ni the tax, eh, the tax pula. The zakat is actually on the goal tu. Goal kita tapi ada dekat arah nu. Kita ambil duit. Dan calculation dia macam tadi tu lah. Regardless of the purpose of the cash tu. Apa kita nak buat dengan cash tu. Okay. So maksudnya tak payah bayar lah. Kena lah. Kita tak kena. Okay. Ya yeah, faham. Kena lah. Uh -huh. Because kita back to basic lah eh. Sekarang ni kita zakat on goal. Uh, zakat on goal. Tapi dia duduk dekat arah nu kan. Uh, so zakat portion dia tu Uh, dia kena, kena ingat eh because you letak sekarang tapi mungkin next dalam masa setahun tu boleh ambil balik kan macam tadi kita tengok, tengok example tadi tu dia baru 6 bulan kita nak kena kira mungkin dalam masa setahun tu lagi 6 bulan mungkin dia dah dapat balik goal tu tapi kalau nak kira zakat on goal masa goal tu ada dekat dekat arah nu macam tadi lah tolak cash amount yang dapat tu sebab based on uh, saya punya understanding the purpose of the cash tu tak masuk dalam dalam kita punya discussion as long as you ada goal yang pergi arah nu, ha, itulah calculation ni. And kena bayar zakat lah. Okay. Ada lagi soalan sebelum kita tengok the second part ni. Because part one tadi tu banyak eh. Because kita tengok zakat on wealth tadi tu. On gold, silver, uh, income apa semua. Uh, on uh, part two ni lebih kepada yang lain-lain lah. Yang sikit je lagi ni. Boleh eh? Saya continue sikit lagi. Alright. Tadi kita tengok zakat on gold. Or, uh, the... Nisab is 85 gram eh. Sebab harga gold uh, lebih mahal. So next is zakat on silver. So zakat on silver lebih tinggi gram dia lah. 595 gram. So um, uh, the amount pun memang ada dalam web, zakat, uh, website eh. Rate of, of zakat masih lagi 2.5%. So total weight of silver darab dengan value of silver darab dengan 2.5%. So for example here, Puan Faizah has 200 gram silver jewelry, 1000 gram silver bars and 100 gram silver coin. Banyaknya silver dia. Does she has to pay zakat on her silver collection? Yes, eh, she has to pay zakat. Sebab total weight dia bila kita tambahkan, dia lebih nisab of 595 gram. Assuming value of silver is 3 gram, 3 ringgit per gram. Ha, darablah dulu 1003, darab, darab 3 dapat 3009, zakat 2.5%. 97 ringgit. Okay. Itu zakat on silver. What about zakat on EPF? Okay, EPF ni pun special sikit. Zakat on EPF ni, uh, this is actually coming from, coming from, uh, apa ni? Uh, EPF eh. Uh, compulsory saving in Malaysia. Okay. So zakat on saving in EPF. Impose if it completes the how and meets the minimum nisab and within the full control of the owner. Fatul Selangor bagi EPF policy punya zakat, EPF punya zakat ni depends on the retirement age. Before 55, upon 50 and 55 or exceeding 55 eh. Cara kira dia, okay. If we draw duit EPF sebelum 55 years old, zakat is imposed on any purpose of withdrawal amount. Withdrawal for the purpose of investment in unit trust is not considered as complete withdrawal. So total withdrawal for the year plus net employment income must exceed NISAP. So total withdrawal times 2.5%. So let's say NISAP for year 2017 is 15,000. Total withdrawal amount is 20,000. Okay, NISAP dia 15,000. They withdraw 20,000. So lebih daripada NISAP kan? So they kena calculation on 20,000 yang they withdraw. So zakat kena bayar RM500 before 55 eh. Kalau dia dah sampai umur 50 atau 55, the whole amount in EPF are already considered as full ownership. Okay, walaupun dia tak withdraw, duit dalam EPF dalam account tu dah dikira sebagai full ownership. 
Sama juga after 55 years old, all saving is considered as full ownership. So full ownership dia jadi macam macam saving dekat bank tadi lah. Kita ambil dia sebagai normal zakat money and ambil last balance untuk calculation. Katakanlah eh, orang ni dah 55 years old, dia tak withdraw pun duit tu. Tak kisah withdraw ke tak. Sebab dia dah ada full ownership. Sebab dia dah reach, reach age of retirement eh, 55. So let's say total EPF at the end of the year 250. Lowest balance 240. So that's zakat calculation based on lowest balance. So zakat dia 6,000. So here dia tak nak withdraw eh. Wants the money to be kept in EPF account. So the half of zakat on saving starts. Nampak dia tak keluarkan duit dia biar kat dalam tu. So konsepnya dah macam saving lah. So dikira EPF uh, saving eh. So total EPF dia tu 50 darab dengan 2.5% equivalent to 6250. Okay satu withdraw satu tak nak withdraw. Dia biar je duit kat dalam tu lagi tinggilah dia kena zakat lah. Sebab inilah dikira sebagai full uh, ownership eh. Okay issues on zakat uh, on EPF ni. <coughs> Fatwa Selangor juga decided and accumulated dividend or distributed income prior to the launching of simpanan syariah is a pure and no need to be cleansed or purified. So all withdrawals is acceptable on the full amount. Principal plus accumulated uh, dividend. Eh. Nah, ini kalau isu dia pun boleh tengok dekat dalam 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 uh, website juga. Eh. Sekejap lagi kita tengok. Zakat on mineral. Mineral like fuel, gas, gold ni. Eh. Ini saya skip je lah. Eh. Ada juga zakat on, on semua ni. The rate are higher eh? basically at 20%. Uh, percent. Tapi rare lah kan kita nak jumpa treasure-treasure ni kan. Uh, so uh, zakat on mineral uh, tak pernah di collect dekat Malaysia eh. Tak ada. Zakat on income. Zakat on income ni zakat pendapatan. Yang tadi semua zakat harta eh. In Malay we call it zakat harta lah zakat on wealth. So this is zakat pendapatan. Uh, employment income. Kita dah tengok awal-awal tu kan, uh, kita punya section 13 tu. Semua ada dalam ni salary allowance, gratuity, uh, benefit in time, resource, EPA withdrawal, any income related to employment. Uh, termasuklah income derived from other than employment in nature. Okay, termasuk uh, income gain from liquidation of property, eh, jual asset apa semua. Dan juga income derived from rental. Remember tadi land and building tak ada uh, tak ada kena zakat but if you use that building untuk rental income and then dia dikira sebagai rental income eh, and subject to zakat jugalah. Nampak land, building eh, not meant for trade tapi kita gunakan sebagai rental. Eh. These property are not subject to zakat however if there are benefits arising from the renting or leasing these properties then they are subject to zakat, rental investment. Ataupun last kali is gift. Eh? Income received by someone not in exchange of any effort or services. Okay, how to calculate the zakat on employment income? Two options. Satu gross income je. Whatever income yang ada terus darat dengan 2.5% without any deduction. Lagi satu income, net income. Maknanya dah tolak allowable expenses eh. Allowable expenses ni macam kita kira tax, kita buat personal relief eh. Bukan untuk personal relief untuk kita dapat chargeable income tu. In tax, uh, in zakat dia ada kalau pakai second approach ni, the allowable expenses tu dia panggil level of sufficiency or hard kifaya. So these are the allowable expenses eh. Uh, meaning that okay for certain amount of income tolaklah dengan hard kifaya ni. Kat bawah tu dia ada dia ada classification eh. To determine orang ni poor ataupun hard poor. So tolaklah dulu semua allowance tu, uh, expenses tu baru kira uh, zakat ni. Eh. Jadi kita tengok uh, zakat selangor. Alright so combine lah semua four categories ni. Employment, non-employment, rental, give donation. Determine hard kifayah dulu and other relevant deduction. Sebab dia ada macam kita buat personal relief eh, untuk household. Untuk anak berapa tahun ada dia punya amount yang boleh kita tolak sebagai expenses untuk 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 family. Dapat different, tak dapat baki. Baki tu, the excess tu must meet nisab. Kalau less than nisab, then tak kena bayar zakat untuk pendapatan. Ha, kalau more than nisab, then kena uh, bayar zakat. Uh, 2.5% juga. Okay, ini contoh eh. That's why I said dia macam personal relief kan. Dia punya limit of sufficiency or high kifayah ni. 
six item home food clothing education medical expenses and transportation so zakat on income ni so because uh, technically when you get an income you will spend eh, for the expenses kan kita nak ambil the access to access to baru kena zakat so contoh dekat sini we have here uh, after sufficiency limit this is the yearly sufficiency limit sama macam tax juga konsep dia so for head of household 10750 tinggi eh kita personal relief untuk personal 9000 je kan ha ini 10750 ini different ikut state eh ini state ingat ni selangor rasanya working adult yang duduk sekali kata ada spouse ada wife eh working adult tu sekali 5000 non working adult ada anak above 18 tapi tak kerja 2300 ada anak di IPT 2800 ada anak sekolah 7 to 17 years old 2200 seorang child below 7 years old seorang 1450 additional deduction kalau ada handicap family members tambah lagi 2004 ada child care cost anak kat tadika tambah lagi 2003 kalau ada chronic disease ada medical cost tambah lagi 2400 okay this is a uh, calculation of zakat eh kalau tengok dekat website saya screenshot daripada daripada website yang ni so you can see eh from here bahagian A komponen pendapatan this is for zakat on uh, income eh ha hasil penggajian upah hasil bebas hasil mustaulat the rental eh and gift and donation okay letak B uh, B hat kifaya isi rumah uh, lepas tu tolak 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 tu A tolak B plus C lah C kalau ada lah hat kifaya tambahan yang okay you semua tadi tu dapat dapat satu emang tolak simpanan semasa tabung haji kalau ada remember tabung haji tadi kita, kita tak kira untuk zakat eh and then jumlah zakat anda setahun so this is lembaga zakat selangor belanja keluarga sebulan di sini nak tunjukkan where, uh, had kifayah eh pendapatan had kifayah dia let's see saya pergi terus ke zakat selangor ni if I can share with you Baik, boleh tengok sini eh. <coughs> Nampak kan lembaga zakat Selangor ni eh? Nampak juga. Alright, so here you can see kat sini dia ada info zakat. Uh, so if you need more information, pergilah ke state yang state masing-masing eh. If you are interested in Bera, in Kedah, in Perlis, then you go to different state. Saya tak tunjuk semualah. Banyak sangat nak tunjukkan. Nanti you get confused banyak sangat. So here contoh eh, dia ada info zakat. Dia cerita lah. Maklumat zakat, syarat berzakat, jenis-jenis zakat kat sini eh. And then we also have uh, tafsir zakat, pengiraan, zakat pendapatan pendidikan awal simpanan, pelaburan, KWSP, TPF lah eh. Dengan zakat emas. Contoh eh, saya klik zakat emas kat sini. Let's say you want to, okay zakat emas. Ha, letaklah emang berapa yang ada. Ha, nampak? Jongkong emas, shilling emas, kepingan dan sebagainya. Dia suruh kita darab terus jadi nak emang dalam RM eh. CJ pelaburan emas patuh syariah. Emas perhiasan wanita yang tidak dipakai. Jewelry not worn eh. Ha. Yang dipakai jumlah atas uruf sahaja. Remember tadi jewelry yang dipakai kita ambil difference eh. Ataupun emas dicagakan. Nampak tadi siapa tanya yang pasal emas arah nu tu. This is the calculation. Masih lagi masuk dalam zakat calculation. Okay so remember zakat emas kita tadi termasuk wang simpanan dengan saham eh. So dalam satu kategori. Right, so these are the goal yang goal, goal related and then second is wang simpanan. So kalau ada account simpanan, account semasa, deposit, uh, takaful. Nampak takaful is kita kata tadi cash withdrawal value. So in Malik is nilai tunai lah, insurans yang boleh dikeluarkan. Baki KWSP ketika umur 55 tahun ke atas. Bagi yang masih bekerja selepas 55 tahun. Baki yang tidak bekerja selepas 55 tahun. Lain-lain tunai, peti besi apa semua. Hutang boleh diterima daripada penghutang. Dia dapat satu amount eh. Saham dan pelaburan. Ha, isilah berapa banyak yang ada. Tolak pelarasan kalau ada. And then dia, dia tentukan nisab dekat sini. Terus dapat fak jumlah keseluruhan harta, jumlah layak kena zakat dan jumlah zakat anda setahun. Senang je. Key in je dekat sini eh. Kita key in, dia terus kirakan untuk kita. And then look at uh, zakat pendapatan eh. Zakat pendapatan. Uh, okay, ini yang tadi kita kata had kifayah tadi eh. Level, level of sufficiency. Katakanlah gaji setahun, let's say eh, saya letak dekat sini RM200,000. Lain-lain tak ada. Okay, had kifayah isi rumah. Automatik je dia keluar. Ketua keluarga lagi tinggi eh. Tadi dalam slide saya tunjuk RM10,000 something kan. Ha, ini dah update lah ni. RM12,000. Katakanlah ada dewasa bekerja. Ha, let's say ada spouse. Okay, satu orang. 
Dewasa tidak bekerja tak ada, ada belajar universiti seorang, kita isi je lah eh. Ada sekolah tiga orang, bawah enam tahun ada seorang. Dia nampak tak otomatik dia kira kat kita. Jika berkaitan, katakanlah anak uh, ada uh, jaga anak dekat tadika tadi tu seorang. Okey, dah masuk. Tolakkan lain, tak ada. Uh, so, di jumlah. Tolak simpanan tabung haji, katakanlah tabung haji ada RM15,000 contohnya. Okey. Dia dah kira dah. Jumlah zakat anda setahun, tekan je bayar zakat. Nampak? Very easy. Okay. If let's say you don't have any pendapatan tapi ada emas. Ada emas je eh. So boleh lah. Pergi yang dekat zakat on gold tadi je. And then dekat sini info zakat tadi dia ada calculator eh. Nak kira fakir miskin tu. Dia ada calculator untuk uh, nak determine poor ke hard copper ke eh. Katakanlah pendapatan sebulan let's say eh. Saya letak dekat sini. Kalau KL bawah bawah RM5,000 dah dikira miskin bandar kan. Okay let's say kita letak RM5,000. Uh, Betul keluarga rumah berbayar. Okay tak satu. Dewasa tak ada. 18 tahun ada satu. LPT satu. Sekolah tiga. Anak tak sekolah satu. Okay, tanggungan aku you tak ada. So, kalau macam ni, pemohon ini bukan fakir dan miskin. So, tak boleh lah. So, nak nak determine dekat sini, kalau ada semua-semua ni, if let's say eh, kita letak ah, tanggungan banyak lagi lah. Tu. Bukan juga. Ah, anak OQ you, satu. Terus sembilan je. So, ni belanja sebulan eh. Ketua keluarga rumah bayar rumah kalau rumah free. Ikhfaih dia lagi murah lah. So this is the, the, the calculation eh. Untuk this is for Selangor lah. Kalau lain state lain dia punya calculation dia ni. Penerima dan keterian institusi. Maklumat agihan. So you read more information eh. Boleh baca dekat sini eh. Kata kita boleh tengok zakat wang simpanan tadi juga. Okay so uh, ni lah. Ini pecahan tadi eh, yang bila saya buka dekat zakat zakat emas tadi tu. Dia keluar semua kat sini kan. So A, B, C, D ni. You can calculate one by one. Katakan ada emas je, lain-lain ni semua tak ada. Then tak takpelah. Let's say pendapatan saham semua tak ada tapi ada emas. Sahaja. Then you calculate dekat sini. Let's say jongkong emas ada RM20,000. CJ Pelabur ada RM5,000. Tidak dipakai harga dia RM10,000. Yang pakai atas uruf ada RM5,000. Eh? Yang dijagakan tak ada. Da, 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 da. Ha, tu. So RM40,000. Mas saja layak kena zakat RM40,000. Jumlah zakat anda setahun. Alright. Eh? So if you need more information. Bolehlah pergi ke mana-mana website uh, zakat ni. Eh? So that you can see. Balik ke slide tadi balik. <laughs> okay because dekat sini pun saya share calculator zakat lah untuk uh, zakat selangor eh. Alright so sikit issues related to zakat on income eh. Uh, what about uh, assessment for husband and wife? So zakat should be made separately between husband and wife because the responsibility to pay zakat is on individual income earner. Relief for children and parents. Okay, so husband or wife is entitled for child relief. Macam tax juga, seorang satu je. Contribution to parents up to the sufficiency limit under non-working category. Deposit in tabung haji. Yearly deposit considered before NISA assessment. So tabung haji macam tadi eh. And then personal drawing by sole proprietor. Kalau ada business tapi sole proprietor. Considered as income to business owner. Kena kira juga. Right, the relationship between zakat and tax for individual in Malaysia. Okay, so Muslim has to make two compulsory payments on the same source of income every year. So on employment income tadi, satu you kena bayar tax, satu kena bayar zakat on the same income. Eh? So zakat is obligatory while income tax is a civil obligation as a Malaysian citizen. So zakat is obligation to Allah while tax is obligation to the federal government. Uh, so ni uh, boleh... Baca-baca uh, lah yang ni eh. 
Then entitlement for rebate. Uh, yang ni pun kita dah tengok kalau ada rebate eh untuk zakat ni. Uh, granted for a year of assessment for any zakat fitrah or any other religious due payment eh. So rebate hanya untuk uh, religious payment lah. So ni contoh calculation uh, rumusan cukai kalau ada eh. So ini let's say zakat uh, jumlah cukai pendapatan dia 8768 tolak rebate sebab bayar zakat yang fitrah 1004 so jumlah cukai dikenakan 7328 contohnya eh. So dapat kalau bayar zakat dapat rebate lah which means instead of 8768 kena bayar tax tinggal 7328. But zakat payment is not refundable. Tax tadi kalau terlebih bayar Nampak kat sini tadi kan? Lebih bayar cukai dapat balik kan? Refund kan? Uh, patutnya kena bayar 7328 tapi dibayar 8470 so ada lebihan bayaran. So yang ni lembaga hasil akan pulangkan. Tapi untuk zakat not refundable. Let's say kita terlebih bayar kan? Kita kira ikut suka je contohnya eh. For zakat, zakat apa tadi? Tak kisahlah zakat, zakat emas, zakat apa because sometimes for gold juga agak-agak kan berapa gram tak ada, tak ada nak measure betul-betul. And for employment pun tolak yang tiap-tiap bulan tu just agak-agak je. So zakat payment is not refundable. And assessment. Okay, habis. Oh. So part tu ni sikit je. Alright. Tu sahaja on zakat and application of uh, zakat eh. So zakat planning and also uh, application of zakat and wealth lah. Ada soalan tak? Tak ada eh? Alright, okay. So, lama juga kita hari ni eh sebab saya non-stop pun ni. So, but we managed to, to complete both uh, two parts of uh, zakat planning eh. And for next week, we're going to uh, continue with the last topic which is tax administration and uh, tax planning. So by now, I hope you can compare because last time kita dah tengok everything on taxation and now um, we look at everything on um, zakat. Eh? So you can uh, compare lah. Alright, ada soalan tak? Kalau tak ada, I think that's all for today.